Good morning, true crime friends. Oh my God. We're on Verdict Watch. We are officially on Verdict Watch. I love it so much. You know I love a Verdict Watch. The only thing better than a Verdict Watch is a verdict. I like the anticipation. Listen, the process can be long and tedious. So long, so tedious. But then this is the moment. This is like, for me, this is like the moment, right? It's Christmas Eve. It's right before your loved one brings you to ecstasy that that's a clean way to say that because that's what i was thinking i was like how am i gonna say this filthy thing in the cleanest way possible oh i love it so much the anticipation okay so look closing arguments yesterday was closing arguments and as the way the world works i was busy all day i had so many things to get done yesterday i was on back to back to back meetings and calls and whatever but you know what i did i got up this morning and well no last night while i was on my way home i had that um the closing arguments in my ears and then i was like okay okay i heard everything i know everything and i have thoughts and feelings and then i got up this morning and i was like but wait there's more i listened to other other people recap the closing arguments and I was like oh that's a good point oh that's so interesting oh I've learned new things oh like and subscribe like this video you're supposed to like each one to go ahead I'll wait go ahead and hit the like button I'll keep talking I'll listen you're not gonna lose my voice but go ahead and hit the like button please and thank you subscribe to this channel for more of this madness and delightful food themed t-shirts and possibly some crocheted crowns so look oh this was my favorite food in school oh goodness you can see my bust points. Um, I used to love these noodles when I was in school. I was obsessed with them. Now, I think they're garbage and I would sooner die than eat them. But like, not just like the pack of ramen, but the ones in the cup, you pour the hot water and then you let it steep. Oh, it was delicious when I was like 18. Now, I would probably die from reflux. But anyway, closing arguments. Okay, so first, um, Christina, Christina, Miss Blakely from the state of Florida, the prosecution gets up there and she tells her tale. And she was like, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, this lady is a kindergarten teacher, right? She talks to you like you're a kindergarten teacher. And part of me is like, I'm not stupid. And then part of me is just like, oh, I like the way you explain that so that nobody gets lost. The smartest of us, the dumbest of us, the most confused of us, whoever you are, whatever you got going on, you can follow Miss Christina. And I was just like, hmm, tell me more. Her voice is so soothing. She never yells. She's a never let them see you sweat kind of girl. And slowly and patiently and methodically, she takes you through all the mountain of evidence that she has laid out. And when you're done talking, when she's done talking in her nice, yes, your honor. Mm hmm. Yes, sir. Voice. You're like, oh, yes, he committed murder. Did he blow away his two friends? Why? Yes, he did. I, I honestly believe that he did. Little by little, she took us through the case, but she started by saying, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, it's almost snack time. But first, let me explain to you why this man is a dirty lowdown killer. Okay, so he took the gun and he put it in the back of the head and the trajectory and the math and the protagonist blah, blah, theorem. You know that word, protagonist. The algebra term that proves that he did this, that's what he did. Yes, he did. Do you want to have circle time now? She explained the whole thing, and I was like, that's Christina. Okay, so then um, the defense that was clearly very nervous, anytime Miss Christina, like, got up to the point where she was about to have, like, a big, like, now I'm about to show you the big evidence, she was about to have a moment, they were like, excuse me, can I go to the bathroom? Because Melly's defense team, all of them became kindergarten. I have to go TT. I have to do a number one, possibly a number two, maybe a number three. If I lose this case, I'm not really sure. But can we can we stop? Because I need to break up her momentum. Please and thank you. I need a sidebar that's about me going to pee. So Miss Christina was like, no problem, Your Honor. They can go number one. Here is the hall pass. And then she sat down and she waited patiently. And then when it was her time again, she was like, okay. I was explaining to you how murder works and also math. And then she continued to walk. Honey, this is a never let them see you sweat kind of heifer. Now, listen, this type of lawyering would, under other circumstances, possibly get on my nerves. But in a murder case, and she knows Floridians better than I know Floridians because I have been to Florida many times. But do I understand Florida? Not at all. Now, truthfully, I only know Florida from like Florida man, uh, headlines and uh the news and comedy so 
Maybe she needs to talk like that to Floridians. Floridians, I think you are smart. I think you can understand things. But if there's one dum dum in the crowd, oh, Miss Christina got them covered. She's like, hi there. You don't look that bright. So I'm going to explain murder to you very gently. You sit back. I'm going to give you some Cheez-Its when this is all done. But first, I'm going to explain why this dirty son of a sucker killed his BFFs. And she explained it. And I was like, ooh, what they going to say? Defense. And she talked and talked and talked patiently and kindly and then it was time for lunch and possibly a nap so everybody goes and they leave and they come back and um i from the bottom of my heart believe that melly's defense team was like oh uh we may have just defecated a brick because we don't have that much and uh what else gonna do so they were like okay the beginning of the trial howard got up there the commanding black man oh i loved him now do i think he's um up there defending a guilty man yeah 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 yeah. i absolutely do now mr melly has the presumption of innocence um in some people's mind, there's a whole free Melly crowd that uh, will be like, he's coming home. He about to come home next week, y'all. Melly not coming home. I could be wrong. I could be, listen, who knows? Florida is going to Florida, right? We don't know what Florida's actually going to do. But in my mind, he's coming home. And I consulted the streets. And when I say I consulted the streets, I mean, I did not go to the streets because no, thank you. Um, I consulted some lovely YouTubers who are the voice of the streets. And by that, I mean, none other than King AK-47. Now, listen, we have talked about the King. Let there be no mistake. King AK-47 right here on YouTube, as far as I'm concerned, he is the voice of the streets. He's hilarious. He uses terrible foul language, wildly inappropriate, LGBTQIA friendly. He is not. But what he is, is he gives a perspective that I do not have. I would never have otherwise heard. And so I will be the voice of the suburbs and he could be the voice of the streets because he's putting me up on game that I don't know nothing about. I... It's shocking. It is very shocking. I am not from the streets. I am from the suburbs. Now, I am street adjacent because my husband is very, very much from the streets. But we have lived in the suburbs for a long time. We've lived in the suburbs so long that my husband has G's. Do you know what G's are? When I first met him, bless his heart, he was like, we going, we doing, we whatever, right? The words that were supposed to end in G's, they never had G's. We've lived here so long. Now he's like, we are going, we are shopping. He, whole grammar situation has changed all up. So now um, I am street by injection and he's suburbs by immersion, if you know what I mean. We've rubbed off on each other quite frequently with great pleasure. Anyway, um, ooh, I... I'm a little randy this morning. I might have to wake Mr. Woods up. Anyway, what I'm saying is, I don't know nothing about that street life. And I get my information on that street life from uh, another, none other than Mr. AK-47. He gives it to me straight. And I'm like, okay, okay. And according to AK, the people down there, the street folks, they want Melly to be found innocent. Well, not he's clearly not innocent. They want him to be found not guilty and here's why. They don't believe in like this judicial system or whatever. They don't care about what the, what's happening in the court. They want Melly to come home so they can unalive him personally. They don't want the state to do it because the state has appeals. It takes years and taxpayer dollars. Not that they that worried about taxpayer dollars. But they're like, nah, 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 nah. Send him home. We got this. The streets got this. So either way, Karma is going to show up for Mr. Melly. Oh, and Mr. AK made another um, statement that I had not considered. They were like, yeah, this case has made him very big. Okay, cool. And then his manager is like, he's going to be on tour. Great. Because those who may wish to harm him are like, oh, now we have a complete schedule of where he's going to be and when. Terrific. And um, Mr. Melly does not, in my opinion, seem to display great judgment in a lot of things. So, um... This case is going to be resolved in the way that it's meant to be, whether that happens in the courts or in the streets. But listen, first, the defense spoke. Now, the defense got up and I was like, OK, what is Stuart going to say? Howard, the lovely black man with the beautiful, deep voice. He's sitting in his chair like, I don't mm -mm. what day is payday? Did they pay the balance on this? I hope they got the balance of this first. He said he has clearly given up, in my opinion. 
he's just sitting there like, I don't have nothing to say. How come he stopped talking? Remember in the beginning when he had a lot to say and he made a lot of points and very dramatic objections and now he's quiet as a church mouse? We haven't heard from him in days and days and days. And Miss uh, Raven Liberty, she just sit there like, okay, I don't, I'm just going to sit here and keep rubbing Melly's hand so he stays calm. So um, when he gets convicted, he don't wig out. And I was just like, okay, she never said nothing. And the one or two times she stood up in court, she was like, basically, this is my translation of what she said. I don't understand cell phones. You mean if the cell phone is in use, then it gives a signal, but um, the signal just tells you what state it was in and not the street or the block or the location. I don't, wait, can you explain it again? Can you explain it again? Can you explain it again? Okay, I'm gonna repeat back what I just heard, but I'm gonna repeat it wrong because I'm not that bright and I don't understand things. Miss Raven, please sit down. You not helping, you are not helping. The only time she helped was that time she faked sick so they could get some extra time to get together and be like, yo, y'all, we don't have nothing. We don't, who's gonna do it? Okay, we're gonna draw straws. Whoever gets the shortest straw has to give this closing statement. And guess who drew the, close, the, the short straw? Stewart. Because the brother was like, listen, I know other black people. Y'all not gonna call me the one who put me, uh, who threw Melly into jail. So uh, we gonna let Nice Stewart go on up there, and uh, it could be his fault when we lose this case. Also, I'm getting a new swimming pool out of this. I'm just saying, did they make money off this case? Oh. Yeah, they make money off this case. These are not free lawyers. In the beginning, they were working their behinds off. And maybe for three to five years, working their behinds off. Now that we're down to the home stretch, that brother was doing everything but climbing under the table. Like, I don't I, I don't know her. I'm not with, I'm just sitting here because it was the only available seat. Um, I'm not really with this team, okay? Please and thank you. Mm -mm. He's hiding from this evidence and I really cannot blame him. So what did Stewart say, right? Stewart said, now, the defense team has spent this entire time saying, that's not Melly's phone. That's not Melly's phone. I do not think this is Melly's phone. In the closing statements, they were like, well, yes, it was Melly's phone. Hmm? Hmm? Didn't y'all just spend six weeks saying, that's not, yes, there are 500 pictures and 8,000 videos. And yes, he wrote that down as his phone number. Every chance he had to give out his phone number, he gave that phone number. But that's not his number. Hmm. Okay, um, so how did his phone get at the murder, murder scene? Oh, they have a they have a story for that too. Now see, what had happened was everybody was driving down the highway at 75 miles an hour, even though the speed limit is 65 because you know they're not doing the speed limit. Why, why would they choose to observe that law? That's, that's ridiculous. And it's three o'clock in the morning. So we driving down the highway, 75, 80 miles an hour. And Melly is like, oh, I have to tinkle. Um, so can y'all pull off? And so him and all of his compadres pulled off to the side of the road and he throws his phone on the seat and he goes pee pee and um, they speed off and leave him there on the side of the road. Hmm. Um, did the data show that? Is that what the, did I misunderstand the data? Cause I don't think that's what happened. Oh, but um, he didn't get left on the side of the road. According to Stu, the defense attorney, the other car that was probably doing 85 to 90 was like, oh, it looks like my friend has been left on the side of the road. I'm just going to let him get in the car and um, with his unwashed hands and no phone to signal them to stop on the side of a random Florida highway where the where the data does not support this uh, supposition. OK, they got they picked him up and then took him home. Okay, and he unlocked the door because he was the only one with the key. Although one of the later witnesses was like, yeah, even if the door was locked, you could get in through the patio, you could get in through the garage, you could slip in through a window. These dudes know how to do a B&E, a, a breaking and entering. Oh, they up on that B&E game. They don't need keys to get in the house. Me and you as citizens, we might need a key to get in the house. These fine young gentlemen, key? What they need a key for? Also, um, okay, so only Melly had the key to get in. Great. But when there's no danger at all, he, the doors are locked. After the drive-by, when they come back to the house, the drive-by, I'm putting that in quotes, uh, they just left the door unlocked. Hmm? Make it make sense. Make it make sense. So it's not his phone. It is his phone. He left his phone because he had to pee. Okay, great. Um, oh, and they also say that's not Melly who left the phone. Whatever random killer happened to get in the car, the killer took their cell phone to the crime, um, shot these dudes, and then was like, I'm going to leave this phone right here for um, the police to track me down. Okay, that's going to be great. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.
Hmm? How, how did, help me understand how all of this works. And then the defense went on to outline other possible people who could have committed the crime and not young Mr. Melly, who was at the tender age of 19. Now listen, I live with a 19 year old and is he a kid? As far as I'm concerned, yes, because he's way younger than me, 30 something years younger than me. But is he technically a kid? No. When it, they kept saying tender age, tender, tender age. I think of tender age as under five, like maybe under four. Tender, this gentleman is not. How many babies you know got face tattoos and, and diamonds on their teeth? I don't know that many babies because I'm really super not into babies. But of the babies I do know, none of them have iced out grills and face tats. I'm just saying. Also, I learned yesterday from Mr. AK that the face tats have symbolism. Well, back in the day, if you were a hard gangster, you had to earn your face tattoos. So as if you rob somebody, they would tattoo a dollar sign on your face. Oh, that's handy. So people could like, this is like your resume. So I could just, I would put like all the places I used to work and my special skills, like on my cheek, it would say good at customer service. And on my other cheek, it would say Pro proficient gossip. Oh, so when people look at you, they can just size you up. Gotcha, gotcha. But apparently now in gang culture, you don't have to earn anything. You can just randomly get things tattooed on your face. Um, I think that that is ill-advised. But me personally, listen, I'm not in charge of the streets. But I do from time to time hire people. And so if a fine uh, candidate shows up in my office with face tattoos, mm-mm-mm. Um, I'm going to discriminate against you based on your face tattoos. So govern yourself accordingly. Now, I'm not saying don't have a face tattoo. I'm saying put something on it to cover up because um, the clients of where I work are not going to understand your face tattoos. They're going to be like, oh, wow, we're working with a gangster now. Terrific. That's probably not going to go good for you. Oh, but don't worry. The defense had some other people who could have done it. They said Track could have done it. Now, Track was there in court. Mr. Track, 100K Track, uh, Jameson Francois. That is a beautiful name. Anyway, especially the, I, something about Francois, I just think is delightful. Not the man, the name. So uh, Mr. Francois, who has said this whole time, I can't be in court. I can't go to court. I can't. I got to stay far away. Oh, he was there for closing arguments yesterday as Melly's defense attorney, who Mr. Track undoubtedly helped fund, was like, we think Track did it. Okay. You see Track sitting right there, right? And we know Mr. Track has guns. Y'all better be careful. But maybe Mr. Track understands this is just business. The whole time that y'all talking and running off at the mouth, he's just like, cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching. Let these folks go on YouTube and click all of my videos and watch all of Melly's stuff so I can get all this money rolling in that Melly will not be able to spend while he's over there in the prison. Because even if he buys every single thing in the commissary, you know what he can't buy? A house, a car, his freedom, all of that kind of stuff. So blame track. Then they blamed Bortland, Cortland Henry, Mr. Melly's BFF since he was a child. Isn't that like snitching or throwing your dude under the bus or whatever? You know, I'm not up on the snitchitude, but um, I would think that the rules of snitching would dictate that you don't throw your friends under the bus. But what do I know? I'm not up on all these things. And then we talk about the witnesses. Now, listen. Young Mr. Melly, tender age Mr. Melly was like, oh, um, maybe I have witnesses who um, proved some things. And the defense was like, we had Mr. A.D., Adrian Davis or whatever his name was. Mr. A.D. was like, Melly got in the car with us and then he came home and then he went to bed and he used his key. And Melly didn't know anything about it. And everything out of that boy's mouth, that young man's mouth, did not match a lick of evidence. Um. Mr. A.D., I have some shocking news for you. Saying things doesn't automatically make them true. I know it is stunning. And I know you probably didn't know that before now. But just so you know, when you say something, there should be evidence. For example, I can say I am not wearing a crown. And um, I, I don't have evidence that I am not wearing a crown. I don't have evidence that the crown that is actually on my head is green. Um, I, I could just say it's green. That does not make it green, sir. There needs to be evidence. But because you don't have a criminal record, we're supposed to believe your lies? Mm, okay, that's kind of not how that goes, but all right. Then the other gentleman, Mr. Glass, who was shady AF. Oh, I loved him so much. He had attitude. 
He did not want to be there. He had his hair all covering his face. He had every excuse in the book. But you know what he did have? Uh, truth adjacent information. He, he didn't want to be there. He was like, I don't, mm -mm, I don't, I don't want no parts of this. But they told me that because I have other cases, if I don't just come in here and tell the truth, I might end up in prison. I thought everybody was hard and prison was a rite of passion. How come none of y'all don't want to go? I, I, to me, it seems like you would be like, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going to do this little bit and then I'm going to go on and live a happy and productive life because everyone loves a convict in the streets. Mm -mm. Nobody trying to lose their freedom, including a uh, felon, Mr. Glass. And Mr. Glass was like, look, I don't want to be here. I don't like y'all. I'm not going to answer no questions. But every word out of that boy's mouth matched with the evidence. So we don't even have to believe what he said. He's just corroborating evidence that we already had. Now, is he technically a snitch? Yeah, probably. But um, he could just like move to California or something. I don't know how all that works. Something tells me he's not going to get witness protection because this was not that kind of case. This wasn't that that big. But you know what he did? Kept himself free and on the streets to commit crimes another day. Um. And he can go back into regular society. He does not have the facial tattoos. He does have that one wonky eye. But we got ADA, like the American Disabilities Act. We'll give him a job. Let him roll up. Pull that hair back. St stiffen his posture. I would hire him where I work. Maybe not. He probably could pass a background check. But I'm just saying. He has the chance to be a, a, man a manager at McDonald's one day. Or a plumber. Or whatever. I don't know. But, um. He looked more respectable than that line behind Mr. A.D. But what do I know? Now, they're like, um, Fredo Bang. All of these other people uh, could have done this. But is there proof of any of that? Mm-mm. Melly, 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 shh, come here, come here, come here. I got to tell you something, friend. Um, you going to big boy jail. You, it's just what's going to happen. You going to big boy jail and it's not going to be pleasant. There was a commenter on Reddit who said, now I wrote this quote down. It's filthy and disturbing, but seems accurate to me from what I know about our judicial system. They said, tight young guns like Melly get passed around like a ham sandwich when you in prison. Oh, first of all, I no longer want ham. I always crave all food all the time, but, um, no ham sandwiches for me and probably no ham sandwiches for um Mr. Melly now because he not going that's that's not gonna go good for him and then finally they say this is a drug deal gone bad the defense a drug deal gone bad I don't think these dudes had to drive out to the middle of nowhere to get drugs now apparently their drug of choice was weed are people shooting folks over weed I mean, maybe giant quantities of weed or territories in which they can sell weed. But these dudes were weed enthusiasts. Something tells me they got delivery, right? Like Melody, Melly is paying for the house and paying for the cars and bringing in all this cash. He got to drive way to the edge of town to get weed. Do they have dispensaries in Florida? If not, they need them. I'm just saying that would probably help some things. But um, I don't. I, there's no proof that these gentlemen were um, partaking in harder narcotics because weed is not even a narcotic. It's just a, a plant. It's just you. I could grow it in my garden. I don't because I don't roll like that. But I'm just saying something tells me this don't seem like a drug deal going back. But what do I know about drug deals going back? Absolutely nothing for the record. I don't know nothing about that life. I mean, I used to know a little something about that life, but not now. So anyway, um. Melly, my friend, you did a year bid. See, I know the lingo because of my husband and because TV. Um, you did a year bid when you was a juvenile. And I believe they probably sent you to like baby prison, right? Where you go and you play on the playground and do whatever they do in baby prison. I don't know because I don't know that much about prison. But um, for this, you were over 18 and it's a capital crime and there's death penalty potential. Mm-mm. Mm -mm. Sir, you're going to want to, you're about to get passed around like a ham sandwich. Ooh. Now I want ham and eggs for breakfast. So anyway, um, Melly, my friend, I am willing to be wrong. I, I'm willing to be wrong. Maybe he's going to go home today, tomorrow, this weekend. But something tells me mm -mm, that mm, it's not going good for you, my dude. It's just not. And polling all the people on the internet, they don't think it's going good. Oh, this is hot. They don't think this is going good for you either. Like, sir, 
You about to have a very bad day. How long will it take for this jury to come back? Unclear. What we do know is that the jury got put up in a hotel last night. I hope y'all slept good. Oh, I hope it was a white bedspread and white sheets because anything else can hide dirt and germs. Hang on. I done talked my throat dry again. Anything else is going to hide dirt and germs. And if it's one bed bug, I will walk in and be like, guilty, let's go home. We got to go home. I'm not spending another hot night in a hotel. And just so you know, when you're sequestered, I don't think you get weekends off. They're not going to be like, hey, thanks for spending the night in the hotel. You could go home and be open to subject to any kind of crazy whatever during this deliberation. And then come back on Monday and we're going to put you back in this hotel. Mm -mm. And can they have guests and visitors? Can you get a conjugal visit while you're over there at the hotel? No. Oh, I believe they're going to have a verdict today. I could totally 100% be wrong. No question about that. But um, do these people want to spend the weekend in a random hotel in town away from their friends and family with a bunch of strangers that they've had to look at for the last six weeks? That would inspire the heck out of me to get a verdict immediately. Plus, they like, I got groceries to buy. My son has a baseball game. It's vacation time. This is not a vacation. Now, if they put them up in the Ritz, I would hang that jury. I, no matter what everybody else was saying, I would say the opposite, but say I was con I was willing to continue to discuss it for as long as I could stay at the Ritz for free. But you know what Broward County is not doing? Putting a bunch of 14 random strangers up at the Ritz. These folks are down at the Motel 6. They might have got a Holiday Inn Express if they're lucky. Any hotel that has free breakfast, I could see the state putting them up there just so that they don't have to bear the cost of breakfast. But um, they're not going to be in that hotel wrong, long. I, I wouldn't. I don't know about you. It would not be me. But listen, I still need to do true crime at lunchtime. Yes, there will be a true crime at lunchtime today. I have a very good case um, that I'm very excited to talk to you about. And it includes lots of coffee. Can you guess? This one's from Dateline. Do you remember Babes with Coffee from Dateline? That's the case we're doing today. Okay. Oh, and last, but certainly not least, somebody asked me what my favorite podcasts were. I should have written them down, but I probably know them off the top of my head. I'm obsessed, positively obsessed with Snapped, Dateline, and 48 Hours. Do not miss them. I do not. I used to be obsessed with obsessed with true crime obsessed. Obsessed with true, true crime obsessed. The first couple of seasons of that podcast are hilarious and amazing and are also the inspiration for me getting on here running my mouth all day every day because they did true crime in a way that was funny and I was like I didn't know that was a thing I love talking about true crime and I can sometimes make folks laugh so true crime obsessed was the inspiration for this whole mess but um lately mm, I sort of phased out of true crime obs obsessed it's not really my thing anymore but they have a very good podcast and then I like um what is the other one that I really really oh it's called I think not it used to be called obsessed with disappeared I love I love I think not with both the old hosts and the new host what else do I listen to um wait wait don't tell me because I'm a suburban lady and you know NPR uh, sometimes I listen to, uh, American justice, but that's on YouTube. And what else do I listen to? A lot of true crime, a whole, whole lot of true crime. And then like, I touch down on like this and that, like my favorite murder and anything pop culture -y and anything sister wives or whatever. Those are the podcasts I listen to. Now in terms of YouTube folks, I am, it depends on what I'm doing, right? So during this case, whoever has the best information on a particular case, that's who I'm following on YouTube. For this case, for me, Cuff Boys. I love Cuff Boys. And he's like, all right, boys. And I'm like, I'm not a boy, but I'll be a boy while I listen to this podcast. I love Cuff Boys. I love um, Black Gotti. Sometimes I have to be in the news, in the mood for him. Uh, King AK-47, love, 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 although not child-friendly. And um, some language will be very, very offensive. If you're young, old, black, white, street, hood, whatever, you're going to be offended by something he says. And I personally choose to overlook that so that I can get the information. Also, I touch down here and there on um, Court TV's podcast with Vinny Politan. I liked it before when he was with Seema, but I still enjoy it now, although I don't listen to it all the time. So that's what I'm following. That's what I listen to. And then audiobooks, because I love audiobook. Usually something, I don't do true crime on audiobooks. I do a little bit of fiction, lots of like biographies, because I'm nosy. I want to know about people.
people's lives. And so um, I listen all about people's lives. And oh, right now I'm doing historical fiction. I kind of love historical fiction. Love it, love it, love it, love it. But anyway, so that's what um, I listen to on podcasts. Lord, I have run my mouth for 30 minutes and I still have to do uh, my Dateline episode for Lunchtime True Crime. Okay, y'all have a good day. This is going to take five years to upload, but um, thank you so much for listening. And if you have not already, like and subscribe. I'll see you at lunch. Bye-bye.